The sound of gunfire and explosions once again on Europe's streets. Inside, police battling gunmen just back from Syria, who they say were planning a big attack. Two of the men were killed and one arrested. Uh, all I can confirm to you that there were plans to assassinate policemen um, in the street or, uh, or at the police uh, buildings. The media has latched onto the term sleeper cell and made that the focal point of global terrorist investigations. But the raid in Brussels of an alleged terror group that took out two potential killers was more about ferreting out those who are perhaps days away from launching an attack. In light of all this, tactics had better spin on a dime or the world will remain several steps behind an enemy. Welcome back to Midpoint. Former Lieutenant Colonel in the United States Army and expert in counterinsurgency, current headmaster of the All Boys Preparatory Haverford School and author of Knife Fights, a memoir of modern war in theory and practice, John Nagel joins us once again on the show. Lieutenant Colonel, thank you so much for being here. I don't believe the Lieutenant Colonel can hear us. Okay, there, wait a minute. John is there. He can hear us, but I could not hear him. Let's go ahead. He could hear us just fine. Let's see if we can get that taken care of. We'll wait a moment. I know he can hear. All right. We're going to go ahead and get him up here in just a moment. Let's bring you up to speed on a couple of things while we take care of another technical issue. Uh, let's remind you that this was a suspected jihadist group targeted in a major anti-terror raid on Thursday. According to authorities who are now looking into this, they had been planning to kill policemen in the street and at police stations. According to police, the planned attacks were imminent, adding that two suspects shot dead were still being identified. Thirteen suspects have been arrested and two more were arrested in France. The Belgian government, in this case, is taking this as a statement that they have tough new measures to tackle terrorism. Now, according to what we have found here in the reports, guns, munitions and explosives, as well as police uniforms and a tremendous amount of money, all seized during the overnight raids. According to the spokesman here, these people had the intention to kill several policemen in the street and at police commissariats, which are there in Belgium, police stations. The operation here was meant to dismantle a terrorist cell, but also the logistics network behind it. Now, how much they actually got is something that we're waiting to find out. What we have heard from the Belgian authorities thus far is they are telling the public no need to panic. The government will take measures to ensure the safety of civilians. Now I believe we have our technical issues finally taken care of. Let us once again welcome in Lieutenant Colonel John Nagel. John, are you there? I am, sir. All right, John, there we go. Good to have you finally taken care of and have you here. With regard to these attacks, John, knowing what is happening and what we've done in the past, You've been involved in a lot of the strategic issues, a lot of the, the tactical ideas here. What needs to be done right now, even if it's going over the line, for these governments and these law enforcement agencies to start going after not just sleeper cells, but the people they know are there? Well, th these attacks have very much been a wake-up call for Europe. Europe has, uh, I think, grown a little bit complacent over the past several years. It's been a number of years since there's been a successful attack in Europe. And, and this should be a, a lesson to all of us. That's what's happening in Iraq and Syria right now. The rise of the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria is a clear and present danger to the people of the entire world. And, and I think what's happened, the intelligence agencies of Europe, the police agencies of Europe, have been gathering information, but they haven't been willing to act on it. Why are, wait a minute, they, hang, on, hang on one sec there, John. One minute left before we take a break. Why have they not been willing to act? They didn't think the threat was real. They weren't taking it seriously enough. And, and they have now recognized that this is life and death for their citizens. I think this is a, an important and very timely wake-up call, and, and I think you're going to see much more action. The Belgians took a good first step. I think you're going to see more and more action as we take on these super cells all over Europe. So what we are dealing with, though, in many ways, whether it was France or here in Belgium, is the realization that tremendous mistakes have been made, and now all we're still doing is playing catch-up, correct? Um, I think we, the foundation is here to play catch-up and, and perhaps to get out in front of this pretty quickly once we have the will to act. The single thing we need that, that has been lacking across Europe has been the will to take action against these identified terrorist threats. All right, now I want you to hold tight on that because that will to take action is something that I want to talk about. We're going to break and come back. We're also going to discuss an anniversary that needs to be noted. 
and still needs to be looked at as both a success and a failure of American military policy. And at 22 minutes after the hour, Dr. Ben Carson is here in studio to answer some very tough questions about his future. And of course, when you're a presidential candidate, everybody listens to everything that you say. It's coming up right here on Midpoint, where we question everything. Welcome back to Midpoint. Retired U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel, expert in counterinsurgency, headmaster at the Haverford School in Pennsylvania, John Nagel. Lieutenant Colonel, you mentioned the words, the will, in our last segment. I'm going to be very frank with you. A number of people, the American people, have been hearing this now for years, that we need the will in order to do something. What is it going to take very seriously, and let's be blunt about this, to get past that wall that we seem to face in the will to go in, find these people, and kill them before they kill innocents. So I think the good news for the American people is that this happened in Europe. Our own agencies, our own uh, national security establishment, I think, has been more attuned to the threat than have the Europeans, so I think have had their heads a, a bit uh, hidden in the sand for some time. That's the good news. The bad news is that these attacks we've seen in Europe are a direct result of the success of the so-called Islamic State in Iraq and Syria, which has been rampaging across the Middle East over the course of the last year and continues to hold uh, territory about the size of the state of Maryland, uh, almost a third of the country of Iraq, much of Syria. Well, what can we, we finally kill... say out loud? Excuse me if I can interrupt for one second here. Go ahead. Is it yep. time for us to realize that we're constantly blaming ourselves here in America? We're saying that we as Americans need to do this, and our American government, and our American intelligence. But do we need to say out loud that many people who are our allies right now, or allegedly our allies, they can't do the job. They're doing a terrible job. They continue to hide these terrorists. They don't help us. So, in effect, we need to start pointing fingers at people such as Yemen, Syria, Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, friends of ours, and say, you are as big a part of the problem as anything else, and if you don't get your act together, then we're the ones that have to come in and have to take harsh action in order to try and keep us safe and then the world. I think that's true for each of those states to varying degrees. I have long said that Pakistan is the state in the world that is most dangerous to the United States a harbor of terrorists. Pakistan, I think, I hope, starting to come to terms after the horrible massacre of school children that occurred there late last year. And, and so I see the world slowly waking up to this threat. For the American people, the message I have for the American people is that the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria, ISIS, is a clear and present danger to global civilization. And the United States has not been dealing with that threat effectively. We currently have about 1,500 American advisors on the ground in Iraq. Another 1,500 are slated to go there. Some of them my friends I've been communicating with, helping them get ready to go. We need to multiply that by a factor of five. We need 15 to 20,000 Americans on the ground in Iraq. We need to push ISIS back into Syria. We need to defeat them in Syria in, in order to blunt this threat, this propaganda message that is creating these sleeper cells, inspiring and training these people to kill innocent civilians in Europe and, and I'm afraid, uh, in America as well. Lieutenant Colonel, we only have about two minutes left, but I want to point out, January 16th marks an anniversary, the time where we began Operation Desert Storm. You are intimately aware of what happened there. You were there. Tell us now, as we look to what we're facing right now, what have we still failed to learn 20 years later? So I was a tank platoon leader in that war, fighting with the 1st Cavalry Division. It was a great little war. We took the Iraqi army from the fourth largest in the world to the second largest in Iraq. But we believed that once we had defeated our conventional enemy, that the war was over. In fact, our enemies went underground to fight us as terrorists and insurgents. They will continue to do so because they are continuing to have at least some degree of success doing that. We as a nation have to get just as good at fighting terrorists and insurgents as we are at defeating conventional tank armies. It is only then, when we have a solid wall against the terrorists and insurgents, as we do against conventional military forces, we have to build the United States to a condition where our armor is invulnerable in all areas of combat. We've come a long way since the attacks of September 11th, caught us unaware, 
but we still have a long, long way to go, and the events of the past few weeks are an important reminder to us that the threat is real and that we need to be ready. About 30 seconds left then. Do you blame the fact that we haven't learned enough on either naive and weak military leadership or naive and weak executive leadership? I, I think that there is plenty of blame to go around. And to be fair, I think we've come a long way, but we still have a long, long way to go. And I would love to see the American people get more involved in these discussions to understand the threat we face and to press the government harder to do what needs to be done to keep the American people safe. What we try to do every day here is try to get the American people involved and get them at least knowledgeable of what's happening. Certainly that's what you help us do as well. Lieutenant Colonel John Nagel, always a pleasure to have you on the show, my friend. Thanks so much. Pleasure to be back with you. All right, take care. Break, and we are back with Dr. Ben Carson who has some questions to answer about charges of plagiarism, uh, plagiarism, I should say, comments comparing Americans to ISIS and his 2016 presidential future. Some believe it's a fait accompli that he will run for the president of the United States. That's exactly the question we're going to ask. That and more when we come back right here on Midpoint, where we question everything. <laughs>